And we are back. And this time we have Isaac with us, who's a service advisor. And what we're going to be talking about today is courtesy inspection. It's one of the things that we do in the vehicles that we work on. We try to do it on every single vehicle. We do it for the protection of our clients. We do it to the benefit of them. And we do it on every single car, or at least we offer it to our clients. So, Isaac, what is a courtesy inspection? Thank you for asking me. Um, a courtesy inspection, initially what it is, it's an inspection that we do as a courtesy. Uh, when your vehicle comes in, whether it be for an oil change or you know brake inspection, any concern, drink engine light, uh, along with that, what we do is we perform the oil change, of course, but in addition, we do an inspection of the entire vehicle. Um, the inspection consists of, you know, we check the brakes, we take measurements of the brake pads, uh, we take measurements of the tires, how much tread is left on the tires, uh, we check all the fluids, you know, we check the levels, we check the quality of the fluid as well. Um, at the same time, what we'll do is um, see if there's any leaks of any of the fluids, anything that stands mm -hmm. out that is giving us a warning and say, hey, you know, something's going on here. We want to make sure we relay that to the customer um, wow. because initially, I mean, we are here to make sure they are safe on the road. Well, thank you. That sounds like a very comprehensive inspection that we do in the vehicle. So now, since you explained to us what a courtesy inspection is, what is the difference between a courtesy inspection and a paid inspection? I would probably say just the exchange of money because we don't lower our quality or our standard just because we're doing it as a courtesy. Mm -hmm. We're not going to rush through it. We're going to do the same amount of work um, on a paid inspection. Um, just like a courtesy inspection, we still email them an inspection form, print out the inspection. Um, so in essence, something. Okay. Let me give you a quick example of this right here. Let's just say that the technician found an oil leak on the vehicle mm -hmm. and he sends information back to the office <clears throat> that there is an oil leak. So now, what is the scope of the courtesy inspection in regards to the oil leak and where does the paint inspection begin with that? I mean, do we, is, is, is it more that is being done on the paint inspection at that point? Yeah, so if we, on the courtesy inspection, yes, do notice an oil leak, mm -hmm. An oil leak may become may come from three or four different spots. We don't know, mm -hmm. so we will relate to the customer. Hey, we found an oil leak. Would you like us to continue? It's X amount to pinpoint where the oil leak is coming from. At that point, it becomes a paid. That's a really good point. Inspection. That's good to know. Great. Well, then uh, now we know what we now know what the difference between a paid inspection and a courtesy inspection is. So let's take it one step further. So a client wants to buy a vehicle and hires us or you to do an inspection of the vehicle. What are we doing at that point? Is there a difference between the courtesy inspection, the paid inspection, and the pre-purchase inspection? Um, as far as the points, we may go that extra mile on a pre-purchase inspection. You go to buy a vehicle and they say this is a certified inspection or certified vehicle. And at that point, customer Sometimes it's not going to take the word of the, mm -hmm. you know, dealership or the seller. So they bring it to us. We go through it, top to bottom, from to back. Again, suspension, things that they cannot see without the vehicle being in. Absolutely. Air. There's a certain amount of liability when you're purchasing a vehicle, and what the information that we give the client because of that. So you have to be extremely accurate. You have to be very good at documenting everything that you notice because all of those things, at the point in time in which they get done, if the client purchases that vehicle without knowing those things and then later gets a hit for all those things, they're gonna be frustrated. That's, that's, that's the limited liability that the repair shop has when they do a prepaid inspection. So I think it's probably a combination of the first two, which is the courtesy inspection, the prepaid inspection, and then we take it one step further just to make sure that we remove all the liability from the purchase of that vehicle. Great. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's, let's go with this right here. What would you like, what do you want clients to know about what we do? What we do here? Well, there is a, a misconception um, of mechanics and of shops. Um, some people say, oh, that we don't want you to know how long it's gonna take us 
cheating job, which in the, it, it, it's definitely a, a myth because that is the way we gauge, you know, of what to, you know, what it's going to cost the client. So if a job is going to, you know, you know, we follow guidelines. So if a job is going to take five hours, you know, it's not going to take us exactly five hours. But there's going to be some. But it's going to be in that range. So what happens if it takes longer than five hours? Well, then it takes longer than five hours. But what happens to the amount of money that you do? Well, we've quoted a, a a price to the customer based off of a guideline. Mm -hmm. If for for some unforeseen reason it just takes us longer, we don't have the right tool, or we, there's a delay in parts, or whatever the case is, we're not going to charge that customer an extra hour. Okay. So we stick to what we quote for the most part. Okay. Good to know. All right. Let's uh, let's get the next one in here. Is it true the mechanics guess more than what you think? Let me take that one right now, yes. since that's one of our callers to ask that. Um, there is a certain amount of guessing in any business, okay? In any decision, there's a certain amount of guessing, but that can be removed by consistent and qualified testing. Now, what happens here is that the average client wants to know, what are you gonna charge me to test my vehicle? And the misconception that they have is that we open the hood and magically we know what's, what's wrong. It doesn't happen like that, okay? Testing, training, instruments, equipment, and all those things combined together um, put forth an answer for a technician, but it takes the training from the technician in order to be able to get a cohesive answer. And it takes time. So the more, realistically, the more we test, the less that we have to get. But typically the client doesn't want to pay for the testing. So it's one of those combination of things that you have to try to fit all your testing within a certain amount of time, and it's not always possible. So with that, let's go to the next one. Uh, three is. All right, so the next question that's coming our way right now from our callers is, let's see, do you really have to repair the check-in line? Yes and no. Uh, check-in line is triggered, bring it into your mechanic, we scan it, mm -hmm. okay? If it is a EVAP code, an EVAP code uh, is part of the emissions. For example, you let the gas cap, you know, loose. It may be true. Yeah. You know, you can tie, you can uh, tighten it up. It may go away. Okay. So that being said, if you have that mentality of, oh, it's probably just the gas cap, mm -hmm. then you're going to let it go. But if something more serious happens, yeah. for example, there's a failing oxygen sensor. An oxygen sensor, if it starts failing, may take out eventually the catalytic converter. That sounds like expensive. Sure. They're not cheap. <laughs> They're not cheap. You know, so if you think about it, you're gonna go like, oh, okay, I don't. It's just an oxygen sensor, but you would rather spend two, three hundred dollars on an oxygen sensor as opposed to two, three thousand on a catalytic converter. Now, if Again, we go back to the loose gas cap. If you have that mentality of it, oh, it's just a loose gas cap, you're not going to know if the oxygen sensor code comes on because the light's going to be on over it. Absolutely. Thank you. So you're going to be driving, you know, two, three thousand miles. Oh, yeah, that light's been on. It's no big deal. Perfect. Well, you don't know it's damaging the catalytic converter. Wow, that's right. So, in any case, uh, we seem to be running out of time right now. Um, I'll be back next week. And uh, thank you. Be sure to uh, follow us. Yeah, follow us on Facebook on facebook.com forward slash ABC Auto Care. Thank you. We'll see you next week.